Welcome to another edition of Tom's Real Food Podcast. Today's podcast is brought to you by ground beef, ground pork belly, grinder, provolone cheese, delicious cheeseburger. Let's go to the podcast. Everybody, welcome back. I am Tom Garvey, the Keto Cook, and Tom's Real Food Podcast number four. Now, at this juncture, yesterday was my fourth anniversary going on keto and also starting a YouTube channel. Uh, <laughs> if you go back and look some of my earlier videos, they were they were rough, but the same meaning is there. Um, uh, the first five, I would think. I uh, was on my journey, and you see, I get excited because things were working. It was really, really coming up, coming together, and I was doing the right thing. And, and plus, um, doing research, watching other other uh, people who are doing keto, and watch what they're doing, and and the whole bit. And then I started watching a few doctors, and I mentioned them before, and it started making sense, made a lot more sense to me. Uh, but also. A couple of them were peddling a couple different um, items or were sponsored by, and I sort of fell a little short of that. I didn't quite, well, wait a minute. You know, if you're saying eat clean or good, you know, have good ingredients, make sure you have this, make sure you have that. But you can try this shake, and it didn't make sense. Okay. So I uh, did a little bit more research on it. And for that first year, on YouTube and, and making these videos, I was so, I mean, I was really, really enthused, really pushing, pushing forward. I couldn't wait. At that one point, I was making three videos a week and uh, it got crazy. It got, it, got, it got to be too much. So I had to step out of the circle, uh, reinvent myself. And the beginning was uh, Tom Garvey. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It was keto cooking for diabetes. That was the first, the first thing I did. And then I changed changed it to uh, Tom Gorby the Keto Cook. And that started taking off because then I started retired chef and I started trying to take uh, regular menu items from a restaurant and making them keto. All right. Uh, and it, it was working. It was working really well. Um, but here was the downfall. Soon as certain people or some people see keto, boom, they click right through and they go away. And my point was, was trying to, trying to explain to somebody, this is real food. This is not from Jupiter. Okay. This is real food that we're, that I'm eating. All right. I'm trying to show you that you can eat the same thing and possibly get healthy. All right. Uh, at that time when I started, I was 320, I think 320 pounds. Um, A1C was uh, pretty close to 10, uh, and I was just miserable. So getting back, I mean, I was making pizzas and I was making bread from my, my kitchen oven that was to die for. Literally. Okay. If I ate any more, I think I would have popped. But the whole idea was that I was trying to show, and I was getting a little mad. I was getting a little ad attitude with it because some, some comments and stuff in the beginning were a little cruel. Um, I had, you know, some people who clicked on and said, I don't buy that keto crap. It's a bunch of junk and, and moved on. Never seen them again. But what they were missing was the whole idea of I'm doing this and I'm losing weight. All right. And I'm not really missing anything. So this is, I have three items I want to touch on today and I'm, I don't want to bore anybody with them, but the pitfalls. So uh, pitfall number one was. Uh, trying to make other people happy, all right, or please other people while I was I was actually hurting myself, all right. Uh, well, you know what? We'll just cut back a little bit, okay? My, there's nothing wrong with my wife. My wife does not take one medication. Uh, nothing wrong with her, and she can eat just about anything. But helping me, she adapted my my way of eating. She didn't have to, okay? And that's the great thing as having somebody, a partner with you. That's why I'm trying to do these podcasts here. I'm assuming that from my first podcast to this one, I have like like an imag imaginary person who is starting out doing this keto lifestyle, right? And now we're on week four, and I'm trying to explain how 
to do this without falling off the wagon, uh, per se. Um, there, I fell off twice, so I know exactly the, the pitfalls and the feeling of this is crazy. I really don't want nothing to do with this, and let me move on. That was my mindset, okay, for a while because I was watching other people making, making videos, and like I said, there is no such thing as keto bread. There is none. Uh, most of the low-carb bread tastes like crap to begin with, and, and the ingredients are not healthy for you. They really aren't. So eliminating them, all right, there you go. So j just like people who are, who are um, gluten intolerant, okay, can't have gluten. So how do you, how do you adapt that? You don't eat gluten. Anything with gluten, you don't have. So that's how you get a, a, around from this. Ke the ketogenic uh, diet got a bad rap from the beginning because it's, oh, here we go back to Atkins again. We're going back to all this distant stuff. One thing I want you to understand, since I started this podcast, I have not mentioned bacon one time until today. Um, everybody thinks that, oh, you eat all the butter, all the stuff that you're not supposed to, you're going to blow your cholesterol out, and you're going to drop dead of a heart attack. Uh, no. So let me let me clarify. Let me clarify a few things. Um, bacon is a fatty cut of meat. It happens to be uh, it happens to be smoked, uh, and it's good. <laughs> There's no other way around it, and it's good. A good thick ribeye steak cooked medium rare, okay, in a cast iron pan with some butter doesn't get any better okay that's gonna kill you listen to the old ways of doing things that's gonna kill you all right if you remember okay i guess it was like the mid mid 70s uh i don't like to mention names because i don't want to get in trouble i just started this out here but you know what but i don't give a damn um olive garden opened up okay P bread sticks and pasta or you can eat salad, the salad bar, or you could have and pasta, a couple of whatever it was, pasta night. That was the killer in my eyes. Okay, there again, not a doctor, not a dietitian, but I'm a retired chef and I know exactly how you were taught to present food uh, to a person in a restaurant. All right, you had to have protein, you had to have a, a vegetable, and also you had to have uh, carbohydrate. Bread on the table, okay? And don't forget the dessert at the end. Now you tell me. So here, here's here's the problem with, with the pitfalls. Um, how things are presented, all right? Um, keto friendly, right? Seven dollars, four ounces of chips. There's no such thing as keto chips. Nothing. All right. Uh, now the alternatives. The other pitfall is mimicking something to imitate uh, potato chips. Okay. All right, so you can you can do zucchini chips. You, there's a whole bunch of stuff out there that you can make to look like chips. They're not potato chips. They are zucchini sticks or chips or whatever whatever terminology you want to use for them. But they are not potatoes. Are they better for you? Damn right they are. Um, saturated fat, okay, bad. Oh, can't have that. No butter. Get, no, 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 no. Get away from the butter. Butter's going to kill you. Well, obviously, if, if you eat, you know, uh, your your weight in butter in a day, it might have a little effect on you. Okay, it's not good. Uh, you know, when you when you're drinking a, a glass of water, you're not using a five gallon bucket and trying to drink five gallon bucket at one time. That will hurt you. So that whole scenario of um, you know the fat and the butter and stay away from red meat, no good. But here, have this pasta. It's it's good for you. Eat, eat what you want. It's it's great for you. So there again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist, but I do know food. All right. And what I do know is if you're putting something up in your mouth, okay, that has probably two inches of ingredients on the back of it. All right. <clears throat> that's not good. That's not good. Take a couple of them names and, and uh, corn syrup, uh, uh, high fructose corn syrup. Uh, all these different things that you're going down, xanum gum, uh, all this, uh, and, and all these other powders and stuff that they put on this stuff is actually hurting us. All right. I showed you in the beginning, uh, you know, the 74 different names for sugar. The pitfalls are the advertisements, the, uh, uh, the way to do this, even on, on uh, if you just 
turn on your computer and, and you see the screen with all the news and stuff on it. Somebody adds on there, or like, wow, I don't believe this. You know, a uh, lady eats uh, potato chips for a week and loses five pounds. No, she didn't. It's, it's, it's all, all baloney. All right. Food prices. Yeah, food prices are up there, but I buy in bulk. Now, I know how to cut up meats and stuff like that. Very easy to do. Uh, actually, uh, last I did a chuck roll. You take a chuck roll and you cut it, cut a sl slice out of it, about two inches. Cut it off in there. And just look at the, the way the fat is. That's how you can cut it. Okay, you have a little cap on top. You can cut out a little nice steak out of there. And then you have the round in the middle. Cut that out. Uh, if you want to butcher the whole thing, you can get multi-meals out of that. I bought a 26-pound. And I think it was like $110, I think it was. I used to get them cheaper. But that was a good price. Um, do you have to have ribeye steak? No, you don't have to have ribeye steaks. Uh, you can get away with New York strip steaks. You can, in a couple of the clips I'm going to show you here, uh, I'm going to show you that, that I took, um, for this week's video, I took a shoulder roast. Okay. I can get, I guess it's maybe nine pounds. All right. And I can get that for like 30 to 29 to $30. And what I'll do is that I, this is very lean. You can see the, the, the fat grains through there and it's a muscle. Very tough. Very, very tough. And what I did with that one is I, I cut it up into pieces, probably an inch and a half to two inches, uh, vacuum seal them. And then when I take them out, I decided that I was going to make uh, ground beef. This is a very lean cut of meat. And I'm going to show you in the video how I fattened it up a little bit. Okay. Uh, I added in a little um, uh, pork belly. Not, not bacon, pork belly. Uh, I'll take the skin off it and I grind it. It's still semi-frozen. I have a small little grinder. Do you need to have a grinder? Well, if you're going to eat this way, it would help. I mean, they're not that expensive and it's, it's, they're not workhorses. I mean, it's a, it's a home grade, uh, grinder. It works, it works great. Okay. But you just can't overdo it. Or you can use a food processor to cut up your meat. All right. <clears throat> to make it into that form, like a hamburger. Now, I made stuffed, stuffed hamburgers with it. Now, Last week's video was was for that um, for that grinding uh, the hamburgers together. This week's second half of the podcast is brought to you by this week's video, Summer Stew, at Tom Garvey, the Keto Cook, on YouTube. Please check in and see how we make this delicious, delicious Summer Stew. This week's was I took whatever trimmings I had from the chuck roll and I made what they call a summer stew. Now, there again, a tough cut of meat. The trimmings that I took off were kind of cut, not much fat on it. A lot of silver skin. I trimmed it all up and I cut it up very, very small and I put it into the cast iron. No additives. Uh, browned it a little bit. All right. And then I had, well, I probably had maybe, um, Oh, I think maybe a cup of beef broth that I had from another uh, dish that I made in the refrigerator. And I buy the bigger containers of chicken and or beef just to use that that way. I want the um, I want it to be coated with its own gravy and I'll put in the butter. Butter is important. Uh, avocado oil. I started off with and just let that cook and build its own juices. The flavors were like, wow. And at the end, I took a, a, a couple green onions. I cut the white off, used that inside, and, and took the tops and used them as a garnish. That's this week's video coming up. By the way, uh, yesterday was my fourth anniversary on YouTube and four, four years that I've uh, been doing uh, keto. Okay. So this, this means a lot to me. Um, I'm human. I fell off the wagon twice. And each time I did, I hurt myself. Uh, I don't mean literally falling off a wagon. Myself. I mean, in my my uh, my type two went crazy. Um, my age, I got to be careful now because of um, heart issues and, and all this other stuff. I can't be doing that yo-yoing uh, like, like people do that are type two and are fighting weight and fighting, um, trying to keep everything under control. Um, off the medications, I have I have three that I take uh, that I can't get off of. One I can, but uh, 
at this at this point uh, I'm staying on it. and it's and I'm going to tell you it's metformin okay uh, it does it does work it helps it, but putting up here works even better uh, now going a little little bit further here uh, like I said food costs are, are crazy w work around that um, you hamburgers fine chicken's good you you, know, you can eat uh, chicken legs and stuff uh, thighs whatever your preference is uh, I try to eat. The chicken that, that it's a high protein, uh, very little fat. I would uh, I use usually leave. I like to get bone on uh, bone in, skin on, and leave it like that and eat that with the skin. Skin ain't bad. I mean, come on. Uh, now, organic. Uh, now we have we had a, a place in in North Carolina. We had, had some acreage out there and. Uh, Marie's Marie's has a green thumb is unbelievable. So uh, that's when I was in trouble uh, with the bladder cancer and then on top of it with the diabetes. Um, so we ate pretty clean. We always did eat pretty clean. Um, it was when the indulgence, you know, when we would go out or something when we back in New Jersey. Um, I know a lot of a lot of guys in the, in the restaurant business where we would go and party it up a little bit. Um, yeah. And eat all the wrong stuff. And I, you, you know that you're, you're doing the wrong thing, but you know, you, you, well, maybe we can get away from it. Uh, but North Carolina, when I found out that I had bladder cancer, that was, that was a hit like a two by four right to the skull. Um, wow. What do you do? You know, when, especially when the doctor tells you, uh, Tom, it's time to get your uh, affairs in order. You talk about a wake up call. I mean, think about that for a minute. Uh, so I tried everything that came, I came across, that I thought was going to better my health or help me out or get rid of the cancer. That's the first thing you want to do is get rid of the cancer. Uh, I started doing research and looking into different doctors and, um, you know, doctors that are online that had a, um, I talked about what my problems were. Okay. And then on top of that, finding out that I had type two diabetes from some of the treatment that I was, that I was getting, that was the main cause of it. <clears throat> you know, you start, poking and you know you start poking at things to find out what you can do and really uh you start following these down these different rabbit holes with different stuff so some of the doctors i were following they made sense okay everything they said uh you know about eating whole foods and uh eating cleaner and blah 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 and then all of a sudden they put, would hold up a can you know uh hey for 1995 you can join our club and we're gonna I lost all faith in that because that was their agenda. Their agenda was to sell something. Okay. Build it up to the point, pick, working on people's uh, emotions uh, that were sick. And, and that, that to me, I just didn't care. For, I didn't care for that one, one bit. Um, <clears throat> but all the different, uh, different aspects of it and the food prices are really high. And I also noticed that most, I have a lot of friends that do carnivore. Nothing wrong with it. I'm doing it right now. But I am adding some um, uh, some veggies in and stuff like that. But th the point is um, the meat prices. Now, you know, anybody who sells, especially the big super uh, food chains and stuff, they're there to make money. They don't care. I'm, I'm starting to notice they don't care how they go about making money. Uh, they don't really care whether Joe Blow has cancer. Or he's a type two diabetic and he's one Twinkie away from uh, uh, having a blowout, you know. So they don't care; they just flat out don't care. It's all about the money. So you got to read between the lines with what is going on. When I'm telling you, you go into a supermarket and it says keto friendly, run the other way. I mean, run. It's no good for you. It's all garbage. It's all junk. Um, clean eating, no labels. Organic is the other thing I wanted to get at today was or organic. Now, now, when we were in North Carolina, we grew a lot of our own vegetables. Marie could grow just about anything. Um, but that, 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 with that said, how organic is it? I mean, what kind of fertilizers are you using? Um, we were using cow manure because we were right on, right next to me. Was You'd have cows looking at you. Okay. Uh, they would turn their head away from me because I would have the knife sharp enough to not be looking at them. Yeah, I need some T-bones. Um, so organic. Uh, to me, organic is um, no funny business as far as uh, insecticides, uh, 
clean, you know, when I mean clean, not like cow manure or horse manure or something like that to help the plants grow a little bit more. Uh, that to me is, is more organic the way I look at it. Now, the guy down the street, uh, his farm or whatever he has, but they're growing, that would be organic. I had a, I had a friend of mine who lived there. He had chickens. Okay. And they knew, uh, that my, my problems that I had and, uh, we would get eggs from them. And in return, that's when I was doing all the juicing. Uh, I would give them the residuals that came out of the juicer. Okay. All the, all the, uh, uh fiber and stuff that came out from the juicer, I would put in, in a bag and bring it down and give it to the chickens and chickens would eat it. And in return, he'd give me a couple dozen eggs for it, whatever, or any plants that we picked, uh, that might have had a little, uh, uh, some uh, uh, bug, you know, infest it with bugs or something like that. I put them in a bag also and bring it down. So that's kind of, you know, the kind of barter work we did. Now, organic, organic stuff in the store. There again, I'm not a conspiracy theorist at all with anything, but I have my, I have my uh, thoughts about it. Uh, there again, you're going to a store, supermarket, and they have a little section. And they have uh, organic carrots and, and this and that. To me, there's no, there's no proof in it. And, and the way vegetables are nowadays, hey, I'm out here in Las Vegas. It was 100 and, you know, 18, 120 degrees out here. So shipping this stuff is sitting on a truck in the back, going from different temperatures. Uh, to me, um, I would take, we, we brought up carrots. I would give you an organic carrot. And I would take a regular conventional carrot, all right? Uh, cut them up and put it on the bottom, you know, with the, you know, which one was organic and have you taste test them. And I can guarantee, almost guarantee a nine out of 10, uh, you're not going to, not going to know it. All right. Uh, so if you, I said last week, be careful with the money. Stop uh, spending money on stuff um, that you can do generically. All right. Uh, organic. Eh. There again, um, I do get like organic. It says on the label organic spinach, you know, in the in the plastic bin and stuff. But there again, <laughs> there again, you take an organic and they put it in a plastic bin, and uh, it just don't make any sense to me. Uh, now I found out one store that um, they have yellow bags. So if you're going to get uh, produce and you happen to use the yellow bag, they're going to charge you for organic uh, material. So if, so if you have zucchini in the regular section and you go down and get that, that's what happened to us. But down and got the yellow bag, put the zucchini in there. The girl says, are these organic? I don't know. I don't think so. And that's when she told me to use that yellow bag. And that means organic to the cashier. And that means the price goes up uh, for it. So you got to be real careful with that kind of stuff. Uh, there again, we'll get into it a later, little later on once I start dealing a little bit more vegetables and stuff. Uh, same thing with organic beef uh, or, or, or pork and stuff. Even the grating on meats. All right. Uh, later on down in a couple more podcasts, I'm going to get into that a little bit. Because uh, I had met a guy who actually, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it right now. I, I met a guy online, you know, on a, 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 a live on YouTube. And he was telling me about his yeah, type 1 diabetic, jaundice, the whole bit. And, he had a liver transplant. And when he had the liver transplant twice, they did it. Okay. And he came back and he said it was unbelievable. Uh, it took him a long time to recover, but he said it was unbelievable how he was not a type one diabetic anymore. He said, that's very hard for people to understand that. He said, but it was two, um, two transplants that he had. So <laughs> just think about that for a minute. Not one, but two, all that recovery time. And I asked him, I said, well, geez, you know, what would you do for a living? And he said that he worked for the FDA and he graded meat, especially beef. That's what he did. I don't want to get the guy's name up or anything like that, but there was a couple other people that knew that was on that live that heard this. So I have a lot of people tell me about, well, I only use prime, prime meats, prime beef, um, uh, because everything I buy is choice, and that's what I find is choice. So uh, we'll get into that a little bit later on, but I'll tell you exactly what he told me about how the grading goes. So that goes alongside of uh, grass-fed beef, uh, 
uh, organic raised animals, okay, that are for sale, and also uh, organic vegetables. We'll get into that a little bit later on down the road. Just uh, for yourself, be very mindful of it, okay? Think things out a little bit rather than just going uh, to a store and spending top dollar for something that you're going to bring home. And within a day or so, you're not ready to use it right away, but you bring it home. Next thing you know, you go and it's it's bad. Okay. And they, they charge you, they charge you for organic stuff. Just a little, it's a little shaky for me. Anyway. All right. Listen, with that said, uh, I appreciate everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, please leave a comment. Uh, check out Tom Garber, the keto cook at, on YouTube. Uh, like I said, I have a lot of videos. Uh, I cook very clean, different ideas how to do stuff. Uh, like, for instance, I said earlier, um, I, I'll do chicken with pork rinds. I, I, rather than breadcrumbs, I'll use pork rinds for it. Tastes great. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Pork. I, uh, pork is my go-to. I use uh, pork tenderloins a lot. Very cheap. Very versatile. You can use it any any different ways you want. Uh, and All right, listen. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, hit that like, subscribe button, and I'll see you next week for number five. Thank you, everybody. Stay safe.